These guys don't know much about Warren Buffett, but they can go on about his brother Jimmy all damn day. Mike Nash from Prairie States joins me. <laughs> and I'm super lucky to catch you on release day of the new album. It's called Trouble Is. How's it going? Pretty fantastic. Just put out an album into the world. It can't get any better. I've been watching you guys and you've been dropping singles and I'm glad to see that some of them are actually on the album and are going to get more attention. Yeah. I mean, we've been releasing singles for a bit now. And it's just nice to actually collect them all together. And, and then actually, you know, we have we have some stuff that nobody's heard yet. So just a great way to kind of wrap up this collection of songs and uh, put it all out as one happy family. And you guys have been touring. You were on a Winter Wonderland tour last month. You actually released a Christmas song, too. Yeah, we did three weeks Western Canada with Jess Mosk Luke. She had us out and was so kind to us. And, you know, we would play our Christmas tune, you know, each night, and which is a great way to, to kind of like share new music. You get out there and share it on the road in front of eager ears. Yeah, it was awesome. It's, I couldn't, couldn't think of a better way to, to share new music. So and I bet it's nice too that you can release one Christmas song and you don't have to do a whole Christmas album because when. <laughs> When people used to do that, they had to record it in like June for it to be ready in December. It's funny. It's we we never thought we would put out a Christmas song, and so it was it was funny. Speaking about like gifts at Christmas, this was written by two of our favorite people to write with, Jesse and Daryl. This was like one of their first songs that they ever wrote together. It was like the first session they ever did together. And so when when we got when we heard this tune, I was like, "Oh, this is perfect!" And the, how the story of you know two of our favorite people and one of their first song writes together, like it's yeah, it was really cool. And then to share it, there's uh yeah, it couldn't couldn't have been any better. So you guys got together in 2017, and I want to talk about the writing and the process that you guys do because it just seems like you have so much music for being you know, a fairly new band. You dropped an album in 2018. So you've got one album under your belt, Lost in the Right Direction. And like when Low Life came out, I just thought you guys were go, go, go. And so what do you do for, for writing and how are you collecting all the music? We just don't stop. Like <laughs> we kind of like the motto of the band is never stop, never stopping. We were very fortunate to, you know, we had some funding through the Edmonton Arts Council for Lost in the Right Direction. So we just didn't like band started. We started writing because we knew we, we wanted to put out an album and, um, and then it just never stopped after that. So we always said we were very fortunate to be able to work with such amazing co-writers and stuff. And, and they're just so motivating. Like they're, they, they just make you want to be better and write better and write more. So we just get addicted to it and, and then we got to put it out and we're just happy that people keep listening and, and are enjoying the tune. So yeah, we just can't stop. And last year you were signed with Willing Records and Universal Music. So have things changed since then? Oh, yeah, no question. It was, I mean, we had, um, we, I mean, everything we were doing was basically in-house. We had some help at radio um, and, you know, a little bit of help here and there, but we were doing a lot of it on our own. So when Bobby Willis came along and had offered us a position at the, the label, it was like, uh, this is seemed like a no-brainer. He's perfectly in line with where our vision's at and you know, he gets the band and it's really nice to have a team that is complementing what we were already doing and then challenging us to to keep getting better it's, it's really it's a perfect relationship there so you guys teamed up with edmonton based sea change brewery company for low life do you have any songs on this album that you're gonna name a beer after and do do the same kind of thing uh no I mean, we've done it once we don't want to like, go you back don't want to yeah while. it was over and that it. was such a that was such a, a unique time too like we had just finished recording a bunch of tunes and then the pandemic hit and nobody could go anywhere and do anything so you know we were lucky enough to have this music and we just kept releasing it we, originally with low life we were good there was a whole campaign that was going to go out along with the song and and then it turned into a ton of beer that we just ended up giving out to first responders and, and teachers and you know truck drivers and people who were out just trying to keep people you know safe and healthy and fed while everybody was at home trying to keep safe so um yeah it was like low life was a, a time 
it was a, a great beer. We all have the cans still hanging on the wall. Right. You know, it's uh, so but, it's not yeah, something that's cans. ongoing. Like people can't get it now. Then no, no, no. it was a one-time deal. It was oh, a one-time I see. Deal. Yeah. Well, it was. Yeah, they. It was really they, uh, cool that you put that QR code on there, so they could just scan it with their phone and then listen to the song. Lola. Yeah, I, it would have been it would have been great to know how many people actually scanned the can, but you can't. There's just oh, there's, really? none of, there's none of those numbers on there, so we just uh, we, we just thought it was a cool idea to put it on there, and hopefully that actually worked. I guess. Oh, that's really cool. But Spotify needs to buck up. I mean, everybody knows yeah. stats of everything these days. That it, would be cool to know. Yeah, an emerging country act out of Edmonton, Alberta, is. is requesting data on their, their uh, <laughs> beer can scans. Exactly. I don't know if they're going to be answering our calls anytime soon. Well, that was a great idea, and you're not new anymore because you're on to your second album. You've got a ton of singles that you've released as well, and the new album drops today, so congratulations on that new album, and everybody can download Trouble Is. Is there going to be vinyl available? We actually you know that's funny. We just talked about this today um i don't know you know it's vinyl takes so long and the summer for us you know we do a lot of festival stuff where we're flying in and flying out and to you know luggage ain't cheap on the planes so to to drag around (laughs) stacks of vinyl might be a little bit difficult but um if there's a you know there was chat that we might be going out doing another fall run um so maybe in the fall with a tour I i don't know but you never say never Right, so this summer, are you, are you able to say any of the places that you're going to be playing so we can make sure we get tickets? As of right now, uh, we can talk about Paris, Ontario, which is their, which is the inaugural year of their uh, festival out there. And it's going to be with, we're on the Friday with Dallas Smith and the Washboard Union. So that's going to be cool. And that's on yeah, July 5th, I think. Yeah, July 5th. That's the only one we can talk about right now. But outside of that, there's going to be a bunch more that get announced shortly. Okay, well, we'll watch your social media and your website. And we can't wait to see what, what else you got coming our way. Thanks so much for taking the time with me today. Oh, thanks so much, Dana. You have yourself an awesome day. Yeah, you too.